So today let's talk about a few early weapons and upgrades you really need to get right away in Final Fantasy 16. There are quite a few must-have upgrades including to inventory and to potion strength which I'm going to show you how to get in this video. As always I'm going to keep spoilers at a minimum but keep in mind that these are things that you do after certain points in the main campaign so there is going to be some talk about that. Now let's get started with the weapons and there are a few that you can get without having to craft or buy them from vendors. But the earliest is called Coral Sword then you get this from a hidden chest during the mission called Writing Wrongs. In this one there's a sequence you have to sneak through some mines during the main campaign and eventually you will get to defeat this larger group of Akashic enemies. Once done with them you will break through this wooden blockade and make it further down the tunnels. But instead of following the main objective, go straight ahead until you see kinda like this end section and also a chest onto the ground which will contain that sword. This is actually a pretty solid early stage choice, it already gives you 185 both to damage and to will break and it comes for absolutely free. Now eventually you will get other variants that unlock either at vendors in exchange for gil but totally stick with the ones provided by blacksmithing and progressively craft more and more powerful swords with the mats that you get from completing main story missions. These will bring you eventually to 315 or so in terms of damage which isn't too shabby and will help you quite a bit in the end game. Now for the armor there is only one piece I was able to find for free early on and that's the Demon Tamer Sash. You can actually acquire this earlier than the Coral Sword or at any point after the Dame main story mission. You can find the chest containing it right here in the Royal Meadows just top side of Northreach. You'll see this lone tower from the distance as you take it to the left of the main road and there's going to be a bunch of enemies in there that you have to defeat before opening the chest. Once done you're free to grab it from the chest right next to this door and it's probably going to be one of the better versions you can get at this stage plus you don't have to waste any gill right now at vendors. Eventually though there are better options you can get both for this as well as for accessories either from vendors but there's plenty that also drop as you defeat story bosses and complete main story objectives. Now let's move over to these must have upgrades that you'll eventually need both for the inventory size and the potion strength. These actually come around the middle of the game and a couple of them extend into the end game. So let's get started with the consumable potency upgrade number one which is the earliest you can get. This is something that will make your potions to restore more health and also make the buffs last for longer. You get this from the side quest called the root of the problem which opens up after completing the main quest called after the storm around the middle of the game. Now you'll have to talk to Nigel in the backyard of the hideaway and he'll tell you to collect three Morgan beards for him. You can actually find all three of them just west of Martha's Rest in a location called Sorrowwise near the lake right here on the side of the map. You can reach that by taking the elevator down from the town and then head over in this location. Now there are some enemies you have to defeat here but once you're done you can go ahead and collect all the three plants in that area. Once you do that, go back to Nigel, give him the items and he'll reward you with the extract which automatically improves all of your potions and finishes that quest. The next side mission is called Weird Science and this is going to upgrade your inventory capacity so that you can carry more potions with you. This quest becomes available after the main story mission called Letting Off Steam 3 and you can find the quest giver on the lower levels of the atrium back here at the hideaway. For this you will need to collect 3 bomb ashes and you do that by completing a certain bounty for the bomb king. You can of course check the hints how to find it in the bounty board but if you want a quicker route you can just head over right here close to dragon's airy fast travel point at the end of this longer road just south of it. This is going to be a B class enemy so it might still be tough early on but otherwise just stay clear of its explosive attacks and you should be good. But once defeated you get the amber from him and also make sure to pick the three ashes that drop on the ground as soon as the encounter is over. Simply bring all of those back to the engineer back at the hideaway and this is going to now give you the potion satchel. With this you can now hold up to six normal potions, four high potions and three of each of the buff tonics. Moving on next though the next couple of quests are going to unlock at the same NPCs but these will come in much later pretty much towards the later stages of the main story. 
So in this case, this is going to give you the final upgrades for potion potency and the final upgrade for your inventory. The first one is going to be from Nigel and the quest called Please Sir Can I Have Some More Bowl. This unlocks after a Song of Hope becomes available via the main campaign and in order to complete this you simply have to locate and defeat an extraordinary Morbol enemy. To find it simply head over to the bounty right here in the area called Whispering Waters just northwest of the Three Reeds fast travel point. Once you're here, you're going to notice that Clive will get off the mount and the boss spawns right from the middle of the arena. But once you defeat it, it also drops the tendril that you need to finish the quest. So simply bring this back to Nigel in the hideaway and you'll unlock the final potion potency and thus make your potions stronger and last for much longer. Now for the inventory, the last upgrade comes from the even weirder science side quest which opens up during the Across the Narrow main questline. For this you have to collect three spherical echoes in three different maps. So the first one is found up north of Hawk's Cry Cliff, fast travel point, right here on this small road to the side. There are some enemies in the area that you need to defeat, but once you're done with that you can simply grab the echo from the ground. The second one is in the desert region just south of this Echo's waypoint and actually not too far off from the Dell Mill Inn which you actually unlock via the main story. Now this also requires you to defeat a bunch of enemies so once you're done with that grab the item from the ground and move on to the last one. The third and final location is in a place called the Advent which you can access by heading south of the North Reach waypoint. It goes the same as the rest, defeat the enemies and grab the echo from the ground. Once back with them at the quest giver, simply give them in and this is going to give you the expanded satchel final inventory upgrade. And now you can hold 8 regular potions plus more extra for each of the rest and between this and the increased effectiveness, you're pretty much all set for the end game. Plus, these are also going to be useful if you go with the new game plus which comes in with a ton of unique rewards and of course a replay of the campaign, but this is something that we're gonna talk about in a different video. Now one final thing I recommend doing is to pay attention to the patrons whispers which you can check by talking to Desiree back at the hideaway. So this is actually something that progressively unlocks new rewards as you get more and more renown. And to get renown, you simply just have to complete main story quests, side missions, as well as many of these bounties. The rewards here can be quite useful, it can include anything like accessories or armor pieces, even like materials used for crafting, and the second last reward is probably one of the best, in this case gloves I believe, in the entire game in terms of damage. Now the main story already gives you quite a bit of renown so you will complete quite a few of these by just progressing in the main story but if you want to get all of them all the way up to the 16th reward you will actually need to complete the majority of the side content. However you don't need to go for that straight away and instead just take it step by step and in that case bounties are actually really amazing at providing you quick XP as well as quick renown. This is pretty much it with the video, you can of course check some of the others I covered for Final Fantasy 16, including this one where I went over some of the best early as well as late game skills and how to make the most out of them including combos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.